Um, yeah, so at Our Moon Cats, do you want to introduce yourself super quickly? Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Elise. Uh, my name is Francisco. And our fur babies are Io and Luna. Um, we on Instagram are Our Moon Cats. And the, these little kitties are 10 months old. Um, we got them um, from a family friend. They yeah. were in need of you know they like, their cat got out and they were like oh well <laughs> we have seven kittens and we were like okay um we'll take one and then a couple of weeks later we were like well we want another one because there was still uh the brother left which was Io, and we reunited the kitties um they were only apart maybe a couple of weeks but yeah. um we they're like our children <laughs> um and right away we we decided that you know we live in a small apartment so cat harness training was something that we looked into right away from a young age and we live in sunny florida so we we try to get out as much as we can and um so that's who we are thank you folks so i'm going to pass it over to at travel cat mom hi so um hopefully you can hear me my name is holly at travel cat mom hi. Um, my cat's name is Meister. He is my only child. We are from California and I started uh, harness training him between 12 to 16 weeks old. He has always been super adventurous so that's why I started training him. Perfect. So thank you so much. I'll just let you folks know a little bit about myself. My name is Erica. I am the human behind at Kimchi the Adventure Cat. Mm -hmm. We're located in Chojage, which is also known as Montreal, which is a traditional territory of the Ganingahaga Nation. And super happy to be here with you today. We had a few questions that came up and also a few questions um, that that we that we're really excited to hopefully answer for you today. And so how this is going to work is I'll ask the questions to the panelists. We'll go in around, and then at the end when we have a little bit of time, we'll actually invite questions in the chat for folks who have other questions. So with that said, I'm just going to get started because I know we have kind of a tight tight timeline here with only <laughs> three minutes. Um, so uh, we heard from both Travel Cat Mom as well as at our moon cats, uh, the teams there. And both of them have different experiences between adult cats and training kittens. So I'd, I'd love to hear from both of you about, you know, how was your experience with training a kitten or how was your experience training an adult cat? Okay, um, well, I guess we could start um, with the kittens. Um, I don't know, I guess, what the sense of, of the group is if we're, if you're dealing with kittens or if you're dealing with older cats or um, young cats, but we definitely only have experience with kittens. <laughs> so that's we started Luna at about 10 weeks yeah. old. So and and I'm, I'm wondering if what's in his mind is uh, he's thinking that if he keeps all Sorry. this resistance up that Sorry. you're going to come out of the hospital and then um, he's going to be free to go get his drugs Sorry, uh, but my it's understanding okay. is that he's there um you know uh, under a mental health order and oh, that's all right excuse happen. me i mean what you do is you just joanne joanne can provide you restraint us? and he's not getting Post. out of the hospital you have that's, the ability to that's what on we want to make sure uh so Alex is the only one who has the ability to put people on mute. So Alex, could you please? <laughs> hey guys, I found. In? I was just looking for Joanne. I found her though. Okay, so, thank you. Joanne's in. I was like gonna. I was gonna try to tell her. I was like, Sorry about oh, that. Mute. Good to um, go. I feel like it. You know, we've been doing this a long time, but it like seems to never get easy. <laughs> um, but anyway, we were time. We yeah. Were so um, we started with Luna when she was about ten weeks old, um, with like the smallest harness we could possibly find. And even then she was, you know, barely fitting into it. At that point, we had only had her two weeks, um, but we were kind of, we live in a small apartment. So the idea was, okay, they're mentally going to be at their healthiest if they can explore the world around them, but logistically like that just doesn't work for us. So, you know, even with a, a like regular turnover of toys, um, you know, boredom is a risk and, you know, with the, she had so much energy at eight weeks. So we were like, you know, let's just see what happens. And if that's 
I guess if it's not going to work out, then it won't work out. We'll try when she gets a little older, um, which okay. is that to start. That's one thing you want to consider is like, why are we even here talking about harness training? Well, it's because we care about our little babies and we want them to be the happiest they can be. And um, a little 800 square foot apartment isn't going to do it. So, <laughs> so definitely our, our biggest tips for starting out, especially with John. the smaller one is you know it's going to take a lot of time it's going to take a lot of patience and a lot of consistency um so with the amount of time like the, our timeline from getting her in a harness and then to outside was i think probably about a month and a half more or less um, it took a lot of time just having spending very small bits of time in the harness playing with the harness uh just hanging out around the harness and then each time we would kind of extend the amount of time that she actually had it on her body. Um, and then eventually got to the point where- They're like know, this, they're, they're like, like this, this yeah. right now, you know, they're just hanging out, sleeping in their harness. Um, and they're 10, 10 months, they just turned 10 months now. So um, I take it slow, um, patience and consistency are definitely, our, it's our top tip. Um, because, you know, they're not dogs. It's not going to necessarily come naturally, but I think as kittens, it's definitely easier, at least in our experience. With Io, we got him when he was 16 weeks, so he was double, you know, double the age when we got Luna, um, and around 16 weeks, we were like, he's, he's probably, you know, he was a little bit more shaky and nervous. Yeah. Luna is like, I'm outgoing. I'm going to run around. I love everyone. Uh, <laughs> I know we were like, I, he's not going to like the harness. He's going to hate it. He's not going to be like Luna, our adventure cat. Um, but he took to it right away almost. And he's out walking within a couple of weeks. Right. So but we, it we, depends on the cat, you know? Right. We, we definitely started slow. Um, and we just would start with the harness laying around and yep. with their toys um with the bed with the backpack we got the travel cat navigator backpack like probably right when it was, we used it we were trying to make it a bed for her when we first got her so she would be comfortable with that um because with the harness we're big advocates for oh i got it so, <laughs> yeah. but yeah i think it's a good start yeah i think it's a good start Thank you both for your answers. And so just everyone knows in the chat, we're trying to mute, make sure people are muted. But I'm gonna move on uh, to at Travel Cat Mom. Hey, um, Alex, could we go ahead and just mute everybody? I don't have the power to do that or I would. It's just really distracting, but I'm gonna go ahead and start. Um, so I also trained, I started training Meister when he was a kitten, but uh, I also, we're still working on some things right now as an adult, he's now four years old. And I think it's um, a very common misconception that cats can only learn when they're babies. Um, it is true that generally the younger they are, the easier it is to train them, but they can learn at any age. Um, and just like our moon cats were saying, honestly, it, training adult cats is pretty much the same exact process as training kittens. It just might take a little bit longer and you might have to take it a little bit more slowly depending on your cat and what they're already used to. Um, so just the same sort of things, baby steps, um, leaving the harness out, uh, letting them get used to being around it, associating it with something positive. If they're food motivated, maybe giving them a treat anytime they interact with it, things like that. Um, putting it on them, taking it off, rewarding them, and then having them wear it for like a few minutes at a time. Um, just being really consistent with that, going at their own pace, being patient, that's a huge thing. Um, and then uh, some tricks there, like what they were just saying, um, is having them uh, play in the harness. Once they get comfortable wearing it and moving around, that'll like really help them get used to moving around a lot in it and then also um, having them sleep in it. Um, so putting it on uh, right before you know they go to sleep or even when you're feeding them, things like that, just so that they get used to the feeling of it um, and having it on during their normal like day-to-day -day activities. Um, so yeah, 
Yeah, thank you both. Uh, well, thank you all three of you. So some some of the few key takeaways from that particular question was first off, cats are not dogs. Uh, and secondly, be patient. Um, so I'm going to move on to the next question. And thank you all for bearing with us as we try and figure out all the tech stuff in the back. Um, hopefully now it's a little bit better with everyone muted. So going into a little bit more specific, um, then how do you get your cat more comfortable with the harness? How do you put it on? What are your tips and tricks for actually putting the harness on and getting them comfortable? Um, okay, we can start if, uh, and Holly, feel free to chime in if you'd like. <laughs> um, but so when we were looking for a harness, because I think that's a, a good place to start is like, okay, also what type of harness are you trying to get your kitten or cat into? We felt most mentally in our heads felt most secure with, okay, we want them to be secure and the vest style harness was probably the best way for us to go, especially since they were so small. And I still feel that way as they've gotten bigger and are growing into being one-year-olds. Um, but best, I would go with a vest just because it's going to help. And maybe as they get older, you can change your mind, but when you're starting out, it'll get easier to like put like the vest, the way it's like the figure eight, <laughs> it's, it's yeah. easy for them to just, you lay it out. And if your cat is, well, ours are pretty gentle. Yeah, we, so. we have two different ways of putting them in the harness. So like the first way is we'll put the harness down on the floor, um, it. completely open. And then right. we'll put, you know, both their paws like right in those two holes and then just pull it up like a little hoop and then just, <laughs> you know, fasten all of the clips and the Velcro. Um, the other way that we'll do it is we'll take, um, we'll grab them by the armpit, so underneath the armpit, so it'll kind of straighten out their arms. Um, and then from there, with the other hand, you can just kind of slide on the harness. And most <laughs> most times, it's not a problem. We were going to uh, do a demonstration, but they're both sleeping. Yeah, they're so. <laughs> <laughs> um, But I think they definitely, you know, when you're first starting out, like lay it out, um, just like get them used to the scent of it rub like put it with their bed put it with their backpack put it with their toys um you know and then you can I think the best is the way to go for me personally just because it's so easy to kind of secure them in your lap or like like with your legs around their body and then just gently put their legs over the two holes and you pick up the sides and you go zoop. <laughs> and, it and then you there's a velcro on the travel cat vest that it just it's an easy um an easy assembly essentially in yeah. the class it gets and it gets it secure and then when we were first starting out we gave them a treat right away we were like okay good job you know positive reinforcement our cats are very food motivated um if you're if they're like resisting dry treats we went for wet treats um and so i know there's this thing where they like fall over right away <laughs> luna did that immediately she was right 10 weeks and she was just like and then I brought out um, some ribbon. So, you know, got the toy right out right, right away because that's what she would go for right away. And uh, she starts, run she actually started running around the most. Yeah, she, she was a little wonky because she was also still a kitten, but. Yeah, uh, and uh, one thing to say about the harness that we use, it gives you a little bit of peace of mind that they're not going to get caught up very easily yeah. in the harness. Um, I know that Erica was there just showing the uh, harness, um, and I'm sure if you have it on the host view, the speaker view, we'll show it's, it again in a second. He's very, um, it's but very it gets it. It's very difficult to get that uh, that leg caught in this type of harness, so it makes it a lot easier right. um, with this type. We'll just go ahead and turn it over to Holly. Yeah. Yeah. So. I have a ton of the same harnesses. This one has like a ton of fur on it because he uses it the most because it's my favorite. <laughs> so um, yeah, and then it would just, um, you put their paws through the holes like they were talking about and then it has Velcro and then on top is where it buckles. So that's how that works. Um, and then what else? Um, so how do you, get them in the harness what are your tips and tricks so we heard from uh elise where there's they're super food motivated how about your kitties 
Um, so mine is also very food motivated, but um, I don't really re reward him at least anymore for getting in the harness because he just he just does it now. But um, I do the same thing where I will like put it laid flat on the floor and then I'll like put his paws through the holes and then pull it up like the same exact way. Um, and yeah, that's how I do that. But I'm glad, uh, I'm glad that that works for you too. Cause we were like, are our cats just like good at this? Or is this like, because the harness is so secure, like you just, it's so easy. You just, cause we tried with like one of the more strappy ones that, that don't have as much coverage and we had no success. Like Luna was falling out of it immediately. Mm -hmm. I think it's also important um, to find the right style of harness for your cat too, because um, that also depends on the cat and their preference. And, you know, there's like other um, types of harnesses, like the H style harness, which is just really, it's just like straps and it's, um, it's very simple and other cats may prefer that like larger range of motion. Um, and then others, you know, feel more secure in something like this. So I think it um, really depends. There's a fly. I think there's really, it depends on <laughs> um, your cat. And um, it's, I think it's good to try different styles um, and see what they uh, seem to feel more comfortable in. Yeah, for sure. Thanks so much, Holly. So I, I guess for it's same, same with kimchi as well. We really love this harness uh, in terms of security. I saw that there were quite a few questions there asking about how we actually find the sizing. Um, and one of the cool things about the Your Cat Backpack folks is that maybe um, someone from the host will uh, drop in a link is that each of the harnesses, they tell you how to size. Um, typically you would use a tape measurement to measure your cat's um, I guess, neck length diameter, diameter, as well as the diameter of their chest. And that's worked us out for us quite a bit. Uh, but one of the exciting things is that I know that there are actually some stores that carry uh, the Travel Cat merchandise now so that you can actually test it uh, in real life. So if you're in Montreal, wait, no, if you're in Vancouver, I know for sure that there's a store in Vancouver that you can try, try things out. Um, like Holly said, it's super important for you to actually explore and find the, the right harness because some cats may love this style of harness, some cats may love the H style harness or other types of harnesses and it really depends, um, obviously, with whatever your cat's preferences are. And the other main uh, point is that the, the differences will also show when you actually put it on, um, so whether or not it just kind of bloop, goes up. Uh, using the this style of harness, or if you're using the H style harness, it just all strappy. Um, that that's also really dependent on what your cat's preference is. And another thing is food motivation and different types of motivation. Play motivation are super important. One tip that we have is when we were starting out, um, we just as soon as we got it on kimchi, we would give her a favorite treat. As soon as we got it off of kimchi, we would give give her another favorite treat as well. And it's being associated with some positive, positive reinforcement. So yeah. So with that said, I'm gonna move on to the next question. And that's once you have the harness, what are your tips on making it more comfortable when you're actually outside? So when you have the harness on, what's the journey that you actually take in order to get uh, your cat outside? So um, what we do is, let's say we're going to a park, um, we'll actually go scope out the place first to see like what the environment is like, um, just so for future reference, so we have an idea of where it is that we're going and if it's going to be suitable for them. Um, and so we will, we'll take them, we'll put them in the backpack. A lot of the times we'll actually put them in the litter box first before we put anything on them because nine times out of 10, they're like, oh, we're going somewhere. I got to use the bathroom, which is very weird, but every single time they will go. <laughs> um, so we'll put the, har the harnesses on them, put them in the backpack and we'll drive out to wherever it is that we're going. Um, and if we're in a new environment, a lot of the time what we'll do is we'll just walk around with them in the backpack for 10 to 15 minutes, just so they get an idea of their surroundings. So right, the they, sounds, need, they have the to yeah, get the, the sounds, get the smells, um, see what's going on around them. Like and then from there, 
I was a really nervous cat. Um, So we would not dare take him out of the backpack unless like if he was shaking, like we would be like, okay, it's too much for one day. Like we'll try again, you know? And also like, if you're going to a park, you already have to, you have to think about the step of getting in the car too. So you have to get your cat used to the car, you know, it's, (laughs) but um, we would do that even going outside of our house or outside of the apartment, you know, getting them used to the sounds around the apartment in the backpack. Yeah. Um, After, after it looks like, you know, they, they have that comfort, then we'll put them on the ground, let them get out of a backpack and then explore on their own usually we'll we'll kind of just follow them as they go you know they're not dogs they're not going to be like you know all right let's go I'll pull them along they're going to come with you right. you know yeah. um and a lot of the time it's a lot of independent just see see what you want to explore and just kind of enjoy being outdoors and not being in that you know 800 square foot apartment that we're in right, <laughs> right. and I mean if and our cats love concrete you know they were like not necessarily wanting to go in the grass right away <laughs> they just were following the path um and we were looking for signs of fear right away you know so like I was shaking right away we're like okay no this is too much go back in the backpack we'll try again um or like you know if their ears are really going crazy um or if they have a fluffed tail or if you see a dog coming goodness gracious like you know if it's your first time you definitely want to make sure they're safe um and we we would always pick them up right away and put them in the backpack if we saw something like that and then you know you just do it here we go again our tip of take it slow be patient and of course you want your kitty to be safe so um be on the lookout like for their behaviors if they're uncomfortable you'll know it and you'll just want to take a step back yeah for sure Um, so that i guess yeah starting starting outside and close to your home and then i think eventually you can move to like going to the park going to the beach um, but we definitely got them outside comfortable, like closer to home before adding the car element too. like, if you can't walk to a park, like in Florida, we have to drive everywhere. So <laughs> if I was in Montreal, it would be a little bit easier <laughs> to like walk to a park, but, um, yeah. So it just depends on where you're located and, um, doing, doing what makes your cat feel comfortable. Yeah. I love that. I love that. And I think we'll, we'll head over, over to Holly for some advice as well. I think you pretty much covered everything, but I just agree um, exposing them very slowly to the outdoors, um, uh, taking them outside the door and then right back in and then rewarding them just like super baby steps, just as you would with everything else. Um, and then take them out for a few minutes at a time and then back <laughs> back inside. And then um, definitely start, like if you're gonna start taking them outside, start in a quiet and safe mm-hmm. area first um, and then you can slowly over time introduce distractions um, just like slowly over time you can start introducing them to new places um, besides like the backyard you know you can take them to parks and everything and then also what they're just saying about um, how if you don't have like a place nearby like I live right next to a county park so I just walk my cat there um, and we don't have to drive anywhere but if there is somewhere you want to go with your cat that requires driving you need to make sure that they're car trained for Mm -hmm. that um and always keep them leashed uh (laughs) for you know so they don't run off and yeah yeah for sure I love all of this these are all great advice I think likewise for kimchi we definitely started out at home first if you have a backyard or a patio or a rooftop that was a really great way for us to expose kimchi to the outside especially given Montreal where we're living is very um a bit bustling and busy. So that way you get used to, they, kimchi got used to all the sounds um, and smells and sights and then gradually exposing to parks that are close by and then gradually again, exposing to car ride related parks. Um, so I know it is 144, but there's so many great questions. One really good question I have, uh, when, you're, when you have your cat ready to go walking outside, how do you get your cat to return to you and stop sniffing around? This is a great question. <laughs> Do you want to take that one? <laughs> we're, we're still working on that one. <laughs> um, we, we currently, we found that they love wet treats. Um, and so we've been kind of experimenting with that. Um, with this with this short leash, um, they, are, they don't go very far. And right. even with the retract, 
comfortable leash. Um, they still, they kind of stayed nearby us when, and would uh, just kind of follow us as we walk. Um, so we really haven't really encountered that as much of an issue. Thanks both. <laughs> um, so obviously walking a cat is not the same as walking a dog and there is going to be a lot of stopping. They are going to sniff around. And honestly, I just let them for a few minutes, I let them do their thing because, you know, it's their walk and you want them to enjoy it. And if you want them to keep going on adventures with you, you want them to enjoy that process. So um, I, well, for me, what I do when my sister starts, you know, when he goes into hunt mode or, you know, he sees something and, you know, just wants to kind of sit there like lurking for a few minutes, like I just let him do his thing um, until I'm just like, okay, like that's enough, you know, like it's been like five minutes or whatever. And then I'll just pick him up and I'll carry him a little bit um, until we're like far away from the spot where like he, you know, forgets about it out of sight, out of mind, he's not interested in, in it anymore. And I put him back down and then he'll continue to follow me. Yeah, great. I, I totally agree. Cats, again, said over and over again, are not like dogs. So it's kind of their journey. It, they, they'll take you around. They'll they'll probably hang out, uh, sniff a little bit. But I believe, actually, your cat backpack has a really great article on how to pull your cat properly. So if you could drop that link over into the chat. Um, I know we are a little bit over time. And I know there, there, there is quite a few questions left in the, the chat. Um, I don't know if we have time for one question in the chat, Alex. Is that okay? Yeah, it's fine. Um, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So one of the questions that we that we had were da, 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 so sizing. Um, hold on. There was a good question. Okay. So first off. Quick question, logistically, this is being recorded, so you will be able to access this um, later on if you would like it as a reference. And I think that's, actually, I think that's it. I think the main question was about straps and how to measure, um, how to measure the, the cats for the your cat harnesses or um, <laughs> any harnesses, really. Does anyone else have any questions? Ah, uh, yes. Hmm. I wonder if I can... Can either of you uh, get your cat to demo putting it on <laughs> before we hop off? Sure. If we can wake one up, we'll do it. <laughs> we can do it uh, okay. Let's see. Maybe you can grab the camera and yeah. do it. Hi, baby. I know. <laughs> Wait, I'm going to show everybody how to put on the harness. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Say hi, this is Luna. <laughs> hi, Luna. Uh, to the floor? Okay. okay. Um, can everybody see you okay? We're like not, we don't have quite Yeah, this is perfect. So, okay, she's pretty good. So what we would do is just like leave it open like this and um, she's kind of asleep right now. So I guess it's like really easy. But <laughs> <laughs> so we just like gently put her feet and she has at times like literally walked into it before. Um, and we just go shoop and just attach it like this. And I always make sure with like two fingers yeah, that there's so enough room here. Like, and wow. the straps, that's why I really like the cow bra one because it just clasps really easily and her straps are properly adjusted. And so she's all set to go. <laughs> that was perfect. That was a perfect demonstration. Thank you so much, Luna. That was fantastic. Great. So we are at time. Um, so I encourage all of you to go back into the schedule, which I believe the Your Cat Backpack team will place into the chat. Um, actually, super quick question. What size was that? Is your harness? Oh, sorry. I didn't know if we were still on mute or not. Um, this is a small and Shio is like three pound, four yeah, pounds, three pounds heavier. Three pounds heavier. And he's yeah. also still in a small, but he's probably ready to go up to a medium. Um, and she started on an extra small um, when she was teeny tiny, like six pounds. So uh, she's eight pounds right now in a small. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> she's so yeah, I, think, <laughs> I think we're at time. Is that right, Alex? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So yeah, it's been dropped. Time. 
into the link. So if you would like to go to a next session. First off, though, thank you so much to our lovely panelists. This was fantastic. Please follow them on their Instagrams and their TikToks. Um, if you could drop your Instagrams and TikToks in TikTok. TikToks into the chat. That would be lovely. But yeah, thank you so much for all the advice and tips. This was super helpful. I hope you folks also found it helpful. And we will see you at the next session. Thank you so much, all.